Hello again, painting friends. Let's use watercolors to paint the last rose of summer. We'll use 140 pound cold press paper, a 9 by 12 sheet cut in half to measure 9 by 6 inches. You can download and print the pattern from the link in the video description below. Trace the pattern in pencil on both sides of a piece of tracing paper. Then position the tracing right side up onto your watercolor paper, placing the B at the right edge of the paper. Go over the lines using a stylus to transfer the pattern to your watercolor paper. But don't transfer on the B right now. You can use an art eraser to reduce any heavy pencil lines before you paint. So I've mixed some very lightly saturated pale washes of color uh, onto my palette. I used yellow green, which if you have a sap green, that's a good one to use, a cobalt blue, a purple hue and some pink. Now you can make pink with either permanent rose or opera pink but you could use a red too like permanent red or magenta and then we'll put out some burnt sienna as well. Real thin washes of paint we'll be adding some water to that as well and we'll use a number six round brush to do almost all of our painting with this morning. So use your round brush to fill in each of the three large green leaves with the yellow-green wash, as I'm doing here. Use the side of your brush to carry the broad a stroke of the leaf and just come up onto the point as you come down into the point of the leaf. And try to leave some white spaces of dry paper as well. Those will make interesting highlights in your leaves. Drop in a little more saturated color to begin the shading process at the base of each leaf while the sap green is still wet. And you can rotate your paper as often as you need to in order to just be able to feel comfortable about quickly laying those colors in. Rinse and blot your brush frequently as you work. And control the amount of dampness that is on your paper. If the paper starts to dry out, you can just spread a little uh, thin uh, water, just a little bit of water or your thinned color back on, and then add your shading. So we'll be adding more layers after this. This is just our initial layer of color. So we'll add the blue leaves in a similar manner. I've mixed up my blue, my cobalt blue, and I've added a little bit, just a touch, of burnt sienna to my blue in order to tone it down, gray it down just a little bit, and lots of water. I want barely any color at all on here for this first step. Pat and blot your uh, excess water out, excess color out onto your palette or onto a paper towel just to control the amount of water in your brush and the amount of pigment. 
and then we'll take a little bit of the violet and touch that in for shading at the base of each of those blue leaves. Remember our color is going to dry a lot lighter than it appears to be when it's wet, so don't be too concerned uh, about getting too, too much color on there, but attempt to keep it very light. We can always make it darker. Variety of color, variety of size. So now let's do the small stroke leaves and the vines. Press and lift load with a little pink and a little green. Now these leaf forms are carrying our eye outward around the design so we don't want them to get too strong or too bright just very soft in color. Drop in a little extra color at the base of the leaf. Press and lift to a point. And use the point of your brush to carry out the stems and the little vine. Remember to rotate your paper so that you feel comfortable pulling those strokes. You can change direction. And pull the brush toward you. Now you can also, you could use your liner brush to put in those fine uh, vine and stem lines with. But if you have a good uh, point on your round brush, you should be able to use just the point of your brush to get all those fine details. And we'll be adding a lot more details a little bit later on as our work progresses. and strive for a variety of size, a variety of color, a variety of shape. Now, we want to wash the rose petals with a very pale, unsaturated wash of pink and leave dry white spaces for highlights. So this should really be just tinted water. You can see where I have my initial wash of color, but I also moved uh, just some plain water over into another little area of my palette and tinted that water 
so that it is very, very pale. And I'm going to work around uh, any uh, flips or curls in the petals and leave those unpainted for the time being. But I still want some dry spots, some white highlights uh, on, the, um, on the main petal. So there are so many choices when it comes to selecting colors. And pigments that bear the same names can vary from brand to brand as well. So it's nice to uh, experiment with uh, all the different uh, sh shades or the different colors uh, on your palette. Put uh, all the reds together, put all the blue together, and um, make color swatches or a color swatch chart from each of the paints in the collection um, to use as a visual aid so that when you're searching for just the right color you have something to to go by, a visual. Here I'm using uh, Opera Pink which is a very bright pink. Uh, I've painted this project several times using a variety of different reds. I have used a uh, pyrrole red thinned to a real weak wash to make a pink. Uh, I have used permanent rose and magenta also thinned down. I, I've chosen my opera pink because it has more of a, a, a purple hue to it. It's a, a bright cool pink that's um, more reminiscent of the actual color of my local sea roses that we have here down by the beach on Cape Cod. We want to work on dry paper one petal at a time. Look at your pattern and note the placement of each petal to locate the overlapping edges. The top exposed edges are highlighted and the lower edges that are hidden uh, as well as the ruffles and folds, those are shaded. So take a while to examine your pattern and you can see that I'm laying in my shading along the shaded edges, the edges that are underlying. Even the gentle dips or ripples in the petals have a little bit of shading pulled down into them. I'll go around the edge of that top lying petal and then just pull some shading out from that edge onto the underlying petal. Blot your brush of excess water, excess moisture to blend. A little bit of paint goes a long way. You can always make it darker, but once you've gone too dark, it's very difficult to uh, lighten up or recapture those white spaces. I've provided a step-by-step -step sheet for you for this class as well. I hope you've had an opportunity to download it. And my narration for the video 
is uh, accompanying step by step that same printout sheet that uh, I've given you the download for. So um, I've started shading this uh, with the petal that is on the left and that sets me up for um, understanding where the edges are on all of the other petals. And we want to work on a dry surface so we do have to skip around in order to um, be able to work against those dry edges. So let one space dry or one area dry before you go on to an adjoining edge. On the front facing petals that are curled up, we want to pull the shading values inward from the curled edge toward the center. gradually add a little more pigment and a little darker red as you build up the shadows. So the shading can be deepened either using a darker, cooler red such as permanent magenta or a little alizarin, crimson, or you can add some blue or violet to your base red. Remember to test your colors. The shading only goes uh, in the deepest folds or on the edges where you want the most contrast. And here I'm just adding a little bit of a tint to the white spaces on the folds. Very, very subtle. I'm using a little clean water, just a damp brush, not a wet brush, just a little damp brush to lightly, lightly moisten that petal on the left. And then with my deeper red, I will just strengthen the deepest shadows. Blot the excess paint from your brush and fade the edge. As long as your paper has some moisture in it, the pigment will continue to uh, spread and blend and soften. Don't overwork. very lightly, lightly moisten, not a lot of water, and then 
drop in your deeper shading value red. And you can see those folds start to pop right, right there. Contrast. The shadows on the the dips are on the outside edge. They should be triangular shaped rather than straight lines. Just think of little triangles of of color or triangular patterns. You can place some initial yellow color, a pale yellow, in the center to give that an opportunity to dry before the detailing goes on. And then shade the turn in the front petals. And notice the direction of the brush strokes. They go from the outside of the petal toward the inside and then that little shadow that separates pressure, pressure, lift and pull inward just a few little strokes is all it needs to give the wonderful depth and dimension to your flower Put a little bit of soft pink on the underside of the flower petal, the underside of that turn. And on the curve, the little flip of the curled petal. yellow with a touch of burnt sienna to shade the center. Fill it around the bottom, the little dip in the center, in the middle of the center, the depression in the middle of the center. And if you need to brighten up some white spaces. If you've overpainted, you can lift out uh, some pigment by using a clean brush, a clean damp brush, clean water, and absorb or lift off some of the pigment with a tissue or with the tip of a clean cotton swab. So here I wanted to lighten up the center of the left hand petal and so I'm lifting out a little bit of pigment just to lighten that up. It got a little flat so I can gently, because I don't want to disturb the texture of the paper, I don't want to uh, I don't want to fray or distress the paper, but I can use a clean water with a clean brush and gently scrub with the brush and then blot to lift back 
a highlight. You always want to test your pigments on a piece of scrap paper A tiny little bit of color goes a long way with watercolors. So I've started with my Opera Pink and I'm testing uh, adding bits of blue to make a deeper color, a little more violet. Or adding a little violet itself actually even a little burnt sienna will create a shading uh, a shading color and that of course is quite saturated so when we add water to it, it will be just about the right shade. And that is the final shading value, just in the very deepest shadows of the rose. Press, press, just accents of color. And you can see how that one final shading value, just a little bit of color, really pops. And not a continuous line, but little line segments. Complete the center by deepening the lower edge and the center depression with a yellow-orange and then shade with burnt sienna.
I've mixed burnt sienna with some cobalt blue to formulate a very dark brown hue for the pollen. Again, you want a variety of colors, some brown and some the darker color, just for contrast. And be sure that your flower petals are dry before you start adding these drops of dark paint into the center. We wouldn't want the dark paint to spread after all your hard work doing those beautiful rose petals. We'll finish off our leaves and background by outlining and adding some brief calligraphy to the leaves and stems and vines. You can use your number six brush with just the fine point or you can move to a liner brush for the finer lines. We want to make a darker green value so I've taken my sap green and added some cobalt blue to it. A touch of burnt sienna will also make it appear darker. And we want to deepen and cool down the shadows in the leaves as the leaf goes under the flower and then add a few vein lines and a little calligraphy along some of the edges for detail. There's our sap green. Our cobalt blue. A touch of burnt sienna. Set the brush down on its side, spread the paint, come down, little broken lines, a few little vein lines, and then a little calligraphy just to define some of the outside edges. Not a continuous line, just brief little accent lines. The side of your brush to spread the paint and the point of your brush for the details. This is really so pretty. It actually looks almost like a tapestry.
And now we can decide and manage everything that goes back away from the center of interest. Gradually getting lighter. Our darkest details, our sharpest details, near the rose, fading away as everything gets uh, away from our center of interest. Use a variety of colors from your palette just to mix and match, adding blue to some of your green leaves and pinks to the edges of some of the leaves as well. Just a variety of color, shapes and sizes. We'll complete our project by dabbing on some background filler among the foliage using a little dirty gray water on the point of our round brush. Just pick up some blues, some uh, telltale colors from your palette and dab on until you're happy and everything is tied together nicely. To make a greeting card, we'll measure, score, and fold the paper in half to make a four and a half inch by six inch card. Use sharp scissors or an X-Acto knife to cut along the outside right edges of the leaves and rows and leave a small white margin as you cut. Transfer and paint the B on the inside of the card so that it shows beyond the cut edge. The B is painted with the same colors as the flower center. More little bees can be added inside the card too, just for fun. I hope you've enjoyed painting this rose with me today and that you'll join me again soon. Be sure to visit my website, larayart.com, and my Patreon page. I'm at patreon.com backslash larraypalex for lots more bonus content to go along with the videos. Bye for now.